as people go to kind of record, really want it to be, you know, whether it's something online, whether it's opening up a physical location, whether it's being in a movie, create music, like Atlanta is and has always been the place to be. Yeah, absolutely. Damn, I already saying. What's your thoughts on the music scene here in Atlanta today compared to when you first started? It's different. The music scene in Atlanta today is different. It's a lot, of, it's a lot similar as far as like, you know, the places people go to kind of record, the lifestyle stuff, where we go eat, where you get your car washed. They be just um, a little different. You know, you might be in the studio recording and you get a vibe and say, hey, let me go to the strip club, let me go to the flying, let me go to Magic City and see if the dance is fucking with it, see if the DJ is Swamp Izzo, you know, things of that nature. But as far as what's different in Atlanta now, the sound, which, you know, that's anything. Everything evolves, you know. Um, Beast, like I, I think right now we're in the era, not only in women, the era of women, but uh, melodic sounds. Yeah. Melodic. People want to just sing, whether it's on key, off key. Um, we're going through so much in, in, in life right now that sometimes people just want to let their hair down and have a good time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And what's your thoughts on uh, all these female rappers finally getting some respect in the rap game? I now? like it. I like it. I remember when there was a time where the variety wasn't what it is now. You know, um, it makes me feel good even for me to still be able to be, you know, relevant, current, and just me being myself is still acceptable today or you're seeing a lot of other females do some of the same things that I've been doing for years. So it makes me feel good just knowing that if I'm my true self, you know, um, I can connect with other people and, you know, still be a part of that wave because when it first came out, like, oh, female yes, rappers, it's going to be just the phase, you know, but shit, how long is the phase? Because we still doing it, you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? It's a beautiful thing because no matter if it's one or two females, whoever is the spotlight is on at the time or if it's multiple, you know, the spotlight is on, I still feel like we all win as women because it's a reflection of us, a representation of us. So many years it was, you know, so many men that were in the forefront. And you did have a lot of women that were out. You had the shots out of my sis, you had Brad, you had my sis Eve, you know, the little Kims, you know, um, Foxies and so forth. It was a lot that was on at the same time, but I think they like to pit females or rap uh, female rappers against each other. So back then, you didn't really probably see five of them or six of them at one time. It was like one here, then another one here, you know. So the fact that we got the internet now, you know, that has also contributed to you know not just female artists, just artists as as a whole being able to be discovered and use that platform regardless of the label saying yay or nay or you can or you can't make it if you have that drive if you have a great a team you know a talent and you stay focused shit anything can pop up yeah you know very true so what what had inspired you to start rapping at first what inspired me to start rapping first my sister um she's five years one of my sisters she is five years older than me she was in a rap group called SLC. And at the time, I was just into poetry. You know, I'm a very deep thinker. Like, I love to write. And um, everything that she did, I wanted to do. So it was like, damn, you in a rap group. She ended up getting pregnant and decided to, you know, put her career on a hold or whatever to be a mother to my nieces and nephews. But she took her time with me, you know, and we played with different tracks and different little. I had a big, rap. I hate that. I had a really big, huge poem book with like over 400 different poems. And from that moment, I was like, wow, like I could do this. You know, it was, to me, it was an extension of my poetry. You know what I mean? And then it just so happened, literally my neighbors were kind of just starting out trying to rap and get this stuff established. We all kind of went to the same school, all kind of rode the same bus. Shit, one thing happened, we vibing, you know, kids coming home from school, playing football, cheerleading, which I did all of that as well, cheerlead, softball, so forth. But that was our hobby. Like, that was what we enjoyed to do, get off the bus, wait to, at the time, my group member's parents to go to the store so we could cuss and say all the curse words <laughs> we wanted to say, and then shit. We burning CDs which kids don't know nothing about today. We had CDs that we burnt to friends of friends of friends of friends. And this thing you know, our music is getting played in house parties because we, we're not even old enough to even get in clubs at this point, you know, and then the college campuses 
And at this time, you cannot get your record played on the radio unless you were signed to a major label. Yeah. So then that was a point where we kind of like helped change the game for hip hop in general and, and the state of, of, of the hip hop culture for Atlanta because the radio station then called us and said, well, hey, well, we need y'all to come up here. Why is it we don't have this song? And we're like, well, is that even possible? Because we're independent, just kids who made a record that just kind of, you know, just blew up. So to just really look back on how much time has passed and, and really wake help. up every day and be like, wow, everything that I have is really off of my hard earned, you know, work and talent, you know, whether it be rapping, whether it be the endorsement deals, whether it be fashion, but it all started with rap. And I'm just so thankful that I still can make money and make a living off what I love to do to this day. Yeah. 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 Talk to us about the creation of Knock If You Buck. The creation. Well, Knock If You Buck was already uh, established. The record was already created. At the time, it was all guys on the track. And me okay. and my other group member, Princess, we you know, we're trying to figure our thing out. And we had a group, our name was Get On Misses. We don't get on Misses. Stumping the snitches. You keep on talking shit, then we gonna send you to the Denny's. We do not play no games. We would say, you lame. We telling everybody, Princess Diamond ran this thing. But yeah, so that happened. One of the group members ended up getting in trouble and having to uh, each other. Uh, so sure boom, we had a performance sure. at Atrium at that time. That's where all the independent artists when you trying to get established, you know what I'm saying? So at that time, it was more of, we need to hurry up and fill in these two slots. Princess was on the record before, I think a couple of weeks or a month before me. And that was a version that was burnt to friends of friends. And then finally it came to that big performance. And I literally had this verse to this song called Shake Your Dread, Show Your Grill. So I had already had the verse ready and just so happened I rapped it to the beat because I knew that we needed this space filled in so we could perform this record, which was already a hot record for us. And people loved it. Like, you know, and then like weeks after that, little Bro, John was, uh, you know, uh, looking for talent. And he came to one of the opening um, mic events or whatever that was at um, the warehouse downtown. We killed it. We shut it down. We got a contract. You know, he put us on, you know, and the rest is history. Still a great friend to this day. You know, it was always positive, always gave the knowledge and is a hard worker. You know, got a phenomenal work ethic to this day. To this day, to this day, yeah. <laughs> and you were just 15 years old? I was just 15, yeah. How crazy is that? Performing yeah. in clubs, you weren't even old enough to get into. They literally kept us in the car or kept us in the kitchen until it was time for us in to go kitchen. off. They didn't want to lose their liquor license. <laughs> I hated it. I'm not going to lie, I hated it. Mom is like that, because I'm like, we got the biggest song in the country, and we got and we got to sit in the freaking kitchen. <laughs> and wait to perform all these people in these clubs and these arenas is coming to see us, you know, but I really enjoyed the, the marathon. Like I, I enjoyed being able to start at a young age because a lot I made a lot of mistakes and was able to learn from the mistakes and, and get my shit together and still to be able to maintain, you know, uh, the, the brand that I have today, you know, the things that I have today. So I am thankful in that aspect, you know, I'll take the, staying locked up in the kitchen before I can perform any day, you know, because it made, you know, it's part of me paying my dues. It made me who I am, you know. And at the height of the song, what were those performances like? I remember one time where in a newspaper, it was something happening where it was violent and some kid had did something or whatever and recited our lyrics, which I don't condone. But it had, at that moment, I think it had got really bad and people were like literally protesting at our shows. Really? And I'm like literally having Damn, helicopters fly over the thing, having like army that people with AR-15s and like having these big guns to export us to and from. Like it was insane because literally people knew no matter where we were, who we performed in front of, they knew that anytime we performed that song, a, a fight was bound to happen, period. So yeah, it was, it was a rush. Sometimes it was scary, you know, it was, it was a thrill. And other times it was like, I wish this, the dynamic would change. Like before we got on, on, we literally had to fight every time we performed because other crews is mad because our song is better. So naturally whoever has the hottest song closed out the night because 
when we fight, they gonna fuck shit up and it's uh, the night is over with. <laughs> so Cruz is getting mad at us and shit. You know what I'm saying? So we gotta fight and it's now I'm like, when is this shit gonna change? Like it was time where I just I didn't know it was bad. I didn't know because it was like literally fighting every night. It was like that era of fight music and then it just evolved, you know, to, to what it is. And, and you still have a piece of it, you know, whether it be the trap music, the conk music, the snap music, all of that is, is wrapped up and balled up into what you hear today. You know what I mean? And I love it. I love it. I really love my city. I'm just so happy that I, I walk around proud. I mean, literally, if I'm on an airplane with somebody, and they from them London. And I say, shit, I'm from Atlanta. They just light up. They just love my dirty draws, honey. So <laughs> that alone being from the A and to still be able to, like I said, do what I love doing, it's a blessing. I just, every day I get up and I, I don't think about what I accomplished yesterday. It's, what can you do today? Can you be better today than what you was yesterday? Yeah. Have you been surprised at all that this song is still so big today that it still gets played? I'm going to tell you. I don't even think it was, I think it was last year, it was the Juju, on, I'm sorry, three years ago, it was the Juju on the beat, it was a bitch you can't do it like me, it was those, those kids that did it, that was dope, and then Beyonce doing a smidget of it, a sample of that for a Super Bowl when she performed with Bruno Mars. But my highlight, highlight out of this whole shit was last year when Solange reached out to me and, you know, her team or whatever about me initially coming in the, in the studio with her to listen to her album and... Mm-hmm. For us to vibe, you know what I'm saying? She to get my opinion and to probably put some pointers and stuff in. I'm like, is this spam? Like, is this a joke? And as you know, the call started coming in and we started speaking with frequent and my team was speaking with her team. I was so excited about it. And then I think at that point, <clears throat> we were trying to hurry up and get get something done in person. And then I think Coachella happened and some of her band members got sick or whatever. And I think that's how her and her team decided to take a, a sample of a very famous YouTube video of me and my, my um, group member of us two, like just being girls, just acting silly. And that ended up being an interlude or I think I believe a prelude or something in her record or one of her songs. And that right there, like literally just kind of like revived you know, the the fact that it was crime I was 15 year anniversary last year. I was already out here doing my solo thing, but it still, it put the extra battery in my back because it just made me feel like, wow, like it's a launch. And then even her flying us out, you know, to the Met Gala, taking care of us, you know, the business was phenomenal. How she embraced her, her team embraced us. I mean, loving everything about like from the nails to the tattoos, like the music she was listening to was just like, like my girlfriend, like literally the girl next door, you know, and I just, I just, I couldn't believe it. Like that really kind of like really jump kicked things off for us last year. And a lot of people, um, because me and my, my other farmer group member, we weren't really doing anything together. So she, even with the Solange being that person, that key to say, Hey, you know, like in the day, you guys are more powerful together. Like it's for the culture that really motivated us to just kind of like put our differences to the side and come together and give the fans what they want, the people, you know, for the culture. So I really, I'm forever thankful. I'm forever grateful for that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever did happen to the group after you guys put out that second album? Second album. When we went out, when we put out the second album, it went, it went good. I think when we went so, I went solo. Yeah. I, it was basically, I was kind of getting singled out a lot and it was a lot for me to deal with. And I think it was a lot for some of the group members to deal with as well. I didn't initially plan on being solo. Actually, I think I worked great with a team. I'm a team player. I think I actually worked better with the team than by myself. Um, but when it comes to, you know, doing what you got to do, like I'm a hard worker and I'm a survivor. So it's like, I come so far, I'm not going to go flip no burgers. You know what I'm saying? So me being solo was something that kind of just happened, you know, because it's like, hey, like, you know, you got these fans. It's everything that we built, so much we sacrificed. And, you know, they went their way. I went my way, you know. Um, and for, for a while, it did take a toll on me. I didn't really want to do shows and didn't want to, you know, it was, it was a lot because these were my friends. Like, we grew up together and just, 
you know, these different things that we go through in the industry that most artists don't talk about, things that happen behind closed doors, a lot of those things scar you, you know, and it was you all know, about the those brand. scars, we shared those scars together. You know, we all had different scars. In the bills we all went all. through different things, but as a whole, we went through shit together. So it was a lot for me, but it was more about survival. It was about like, hey, you can sit here and be sad, feel sorry for yourself, but you got the right. Excel trying to film, you got Vibe yeah, Magazine, boy. you got this label trying Ooh. to sign you, that label trying to sign you, you got, you know, Thank I had to put out several mixtapes. Like, I'm always working. It's like, these opportunities are not going to be here forever. So either you're going to take advantage of the opportunity or you're going to sit here and life's going to pass you by, pass you by. And I took advantage of the opportunity. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm even here now, even for you guys to even still be interested to even pick my brain to see what's my thought process. What am I doing now? How is it like then? You know, I had to just keep going. And talk to us about the parking lot concert. The parking lot concert. <clears throat> well, shouts out to WeTV. Growing up Hip Hop Atlanta, I'm actually filming a TV show right now. And that was, I think, my highlight. Mm-hmm. On top of the fact that when COVID happened, you know, I tour every weekend. So that was something that was kind of a bummer for me, a downer, um, because I like to meet people. I like to, you know, go try different foods, learn different cultures in different cities. Like, performing is my thing. You know, everybody had their thing. Don't get me wrong. I love to record. I love to sign autographs and this and that. But for me, it's being on that stage and meeting people touching them, hugging them, giving them love and getting that love in return. Like, so when it came to a point where they had these geniuses, shots out the street, street is it, came up with this idea that was the next best thing to a freaking a drive-in car movie, right? <laughs> it's to have an outdoor concert where people can social distance and, 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 and still have fun, but still be safe, do it in the comfort of your own personal space. So to even see all the cars, like literally as we rolled up on a golf course, you know, like we had, I'm sorry, the, the uh, golf carts, like literally just being able to see like all the cars lined up just as if it was a drive-in movie. But the only difference, it was a concert. Seeing bitches get on top of their car, their hoods, twerking like it's freak Nick. It was like a combination of what I grew up to. I wasn't even old enough. My sisters had, my sisters them had to snatch me to even be able to go out to go to Freak Nick. They was like, my, my parents were like, you gotta take your little sister with you. So for me, it was like a snap of my past, a Freak Nick, and then a snap of what's going on. And now the new normal, you know what I mean? The social distancing and to see that I was able to still, you know, obviously make money, you know, film this TV show for them to be able to see me and my element, what I enjoy doing, to see me with my group members that still to this day, this this song or these records playing every single club every night, you know, I thought that was great. And 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 the people that are fans of Crime Rock, they knew about our journey. They knew about the struggle, the ups and downs. So to be able to see us come together as a whole and say, you know what, at the end of the day, whatever it was, they're bigger, you know, or whatever, the, the love that they have is bigger. Their loyalty that they have for the culture is bigger than whatever small shit they went through in the past. So to see that on TV, to be able to still perform, to be able to have all my group members and then it's hot oh yeah i was happy <laughs> it's hot i'm like i was born in may so i love the heat like i'm like a summer baby damn near so yeah i, I had my little short short sound and shit you know what i'm saying hair all down nails all did i'm whatever. a virgo and then i got a chance to run into a lot no of the other groups Small that DJ. were in that same era of of was still being played as well in the club mm-hmm. today. So it's always fun when I can kind of like run into them and, and link up. It takes us back. It's good memories. Yeah. Yeah. Real shit. All right. Wanted you to talk to you about the, the Lot of Money oh, music video. How much no, fun was money. that shoot? Lot of Money. Oh, wow. The Lot of Money music Virgo. video was a lot of fun because that was in the heart of me breaking away as a solo artist. It, this is when I had a single deal over, I believe, at Jive Records. And I had all my celebrity friends like, who my believed soul. in me, who, you time. know, on were there soul. from day one that knew how much of a hard worker I was and just, you know, how much I meant to Atlanta, the, the state of hip hop, you know what I'm saying? So I had, I had a you know, job, I had Gucci, I have group members. I had a uh, Brandon T. Jackson as an actor. Um, 
I had Nivea in there. I had Ron Simmons in there. I had some football players in there. Like it was, a, it was about in that moment. It felt good. It was like everybody, let's huddle around Diamond. Let's give her some love. Like you know, like I said, just no different from any other female that's out. When they're out, no matter where they at, where they from, you still represent me because you're a female. You know what I'm saying? So I felt like in that moment, it was like everybody felt like they had to, you know, put their arms around me and lift me up and give me love because that was such a hard transition. You know what I'm saying? And to to be able to do that. A lot of people can't break away from a group and, and still have your own individual identity. And even now, it's such a beautiful Food thing. To, I might brother. be booked up Friday and Saturday as Diamond, but then I might I'm have a, a show with Crime Mob on Sunday. So to be able to still be able to bounce out and have my own individual brand and then get back and still have the brand with the group, it's a beautiful thing. Like, I'm so, I'm so thankful. I just feel like I'm getting better as I get older. You know, most people feel like, oh, oh my God, I'm getting older. As long as I look good and I feel good, I ain't tripping. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> All right, talk to us about your new project, Pretty Bitch Music. My new project, Pretty Bitch Music, is, you know, one of the highly, I would say, um, not just anticipated, the highly, one of the most loved mixtape series out of all my series. It's the one series, Bitch Music, that I have the most projects. I think I have about six bitch music prop, uh, projects and um that was bitch music was also the very first mixtape that i dropped when i went solo so i thought it was imperative to kind of go back especially with the 15 year anniversary you know everybody kind of reliving stuff everybody's kind of sampling things and so forth it was like shit why not relive my journey why not remake my shit you know what i'm saying but just upgrade it you know, and I've been on a pretty game, very tough, you know, side by speaking of pretty, you know, since I have my my natural skin, <laughs> I also have a skincare line that I will be launching um, in about a week or two called Diamond Glow. And I have various things that will help when you have soap, you have like light soap to exfoliate for your skin at night, ladies. You know, when you're wearing all this makeup, you want to take it off and take good care of your skin. You have that at night. You have, um, you know, the night cream. Then I have, like, the night glow, this light serum that keeps your face oiled and hydrated. You know, sometimes you wake up in the morning, your face all dry, ashy and shit. But, yeah, that's my main thing. Shouts out to my branding managers, Eyelash Vision, Shantae, and Mimi. I learned that. That's very imperative to always have some type of product. It's all about branding, no matter what you do. And I feel like I've learned that with every project, I need some type of brand or product or endorsement. Shouts out to Subline Donuts. I have my own diamond donut, my that. 32 flavor diamond donut that came out with this project as well. Pretty bitch music. And I'm pretty much just, just keeping it real funky. The same double um, unapologetic rhyme that people love from me. Like, nigga, don't fuck with me. I fuck you up. Bitch, I take your nigga Run me my money. I got my own money. You know, like the confident shit, the sassy shit. Cause you know, it's a lot of times women, you know, felt like, you know, we're, we're told we got to be cute, be quiet, you know, put your head down, act like a lady, you know, let me, you know, so for me, you know, and I think other women that live through me when I am doing my music, it's a way to, to feel empowered, to be unapologetic about whatever it is, whoever you are, you know what I'm saying? And feel good about, being a fit a female and uplifting the next person so you know that particular project is is really close to my heart because i also have one track on there where i talk about a past relationship when i was 19 and i named the track miss 19 where i'm talking to someone that might be 19 that could have went through some of the things where it could be another up-and-coming artist that could have been dating someone else in the limelight as well and kind of going through the ups and downs and so forth and you know, just just telling the telling them to to choose yourself in the end. You know, if if you put your time and, and your energy and and bet your bet, bet your money on yourself, the best investment is yourself. You know, and consistency is the key. So that was another reason why I went back to the bitch music because you know, no different from any actor that breaks out and they they make this like this huge this breakout star. And we're like, wait a minute, they start popping up a lot of their old shit popping up. No, they didn't just break out overnight. They've been, been putting in work. So that was another reason why I chose to 
go with the bitch music because then from there the people who might not know who Domin is can then go back and educate themselves and see Donna was the first originator of bitch music. There's a lot of other females that's come out with different type of bitch musics. But, you know, to be clear, it started with Diamond, <laughs> you know. So things that people don't know unless you appoint them to the right direction to educate them, you know. just It's just how history, how it happened in the order that it happened in. And with this new project, um, it's called Pretty Bitch Trapper. Okay. I'm excited about that because... Yet again, I have another endorsement deal, like I said, the Diamond Glow um, skincare line. And I'm going to celebrate that. I'm going to, you know, be fierce. I'm definitely playing with different sounds. I'm being more melodic this time, singing a little bit more because I'm, I'm learning that with the, the evolution of music of Atlanta, that's what the kids like, you know. So I'm finding a way to incorporate that, that double unapologetic rhyme that they love from Diamond but also adding it to where I could have more of the singing, more melodic tracks with that as well. So, yeah, I'm excited about it. You think that project will drop this year? Yeah, in okay. two weeks. Okay. Pretty Bitch Trapper drops in two weeks we with go. my skincare line, Diamond Glow. Okay. That's what's up. All right, so growing up hip-hop, what, what is it like being on set filming this show? Oh, growing up hip-hop. I'm not going to lie to you because I did four years of television and then I like took two years off to be a mom, you know, and ah, it's weird because I grew up in a limelight, right? And I've done television and it was a great experience, but the other shows that I've done, I wasn't really at home. I wasn't really in my element. I was living in other cities. Like New York was great because all my family is from New York. So that was cool. That was like going to college, like a second home. But then when we did the last two seasons of the previous show that I did in LA, I think that one really got me because I was further away from family. I was 3,000 miles away. I didn't know glam. I didn't know hair, makeup, wardrobe, where to record, where to get my weed from, you know, things of that nature. So now that I'm a mom and my whole life has shifted to, my priority is my child when I wake up in the morning. So had I had an opportunity to do another reality show in another state, I don't know if I would have took it, you know? So like when I say about God, like I'm just so thankful that he allowed this opportunity to come um, uh, back in my life to be on reality television, to be transparent and do what I'm doing now for other up and coming women. And, and I learned with television, when you try to fake it and you try to be something you're not, People gonna see right through that. So the best thing that I can do is just be myself. That's what's gotten me here this far, this long. What how can you lose? You know? But it still is that fine line of having your privacy. But because I've my whole entire life, my whole entire life I've been in a limelight, it's you still wanna have, well at least me, I can't speak for everybody, you still wanna have that privacy. You know? So I was a little scared. I was a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie, um, at first because it was more so about what I have going on, who are you dating, and, and things that I normally kind of keep private. I just promote my music, I do my show shit, I promote my products, and that's it. It ain't who she fucking, what she lose, what she drive, who her friend, you know, but as I started to do it, and I, I got with the producers, and I saw that this was a great opportunity, these people were not trying to create something that was not reality. These people really are really just picking up these cameras and filming what they see in my life. That made me feel good. It made me um, more acceptable to be vulnerable and let my wall down. You know what I'm saying? And when I did that and I let my wall down and I was just Britney, Diamond, it just flowed. It flowed and it felt great. And I would love to do it again next year if I have that opportunity. Um, I got a chance to work with a lot of great people, met a lot of great people. Um, Drea, our Kelly's ex-wife is on there. The brat, my big sister. Um, remarkable, easy E's daughter. Like a lot, it's a lot of great people, you know what I'm saying? And we all going through stuff. So it was a lot of times that we had abundant moments to where we all got a chance to be vulnerable on camera and talk about the different things that's going on in each other's lives. And it's all to give each other advice and uplift each other. Like, but in the still, we had drama, you know, because shit, when you put a lot of different personalities around each other, I'm naturally you're going to have some type of drama. Ma so, yeah, I, I think it was great that it was very authentic. 
it was nothing that was staged or put together. And like I said, it's my reality. I'm shooting from home. I'm in my city. I can showcase my friends, where to eat, where to shop, my whole, everything, my whole built, everything about me. I'm from the A. So, yeah, it was a great opportunity. I love it. That's what's up. All right. What else are you working on right now, then? Well, other than that, that would be, oh, I have a, I have a movie that's out right now called, that I participated in called The Lick. Mm. Um, Chris Larson is a director for that. I think they're here shooting part two for Atlanta. And I would say definitely maybe doing a lot more acting. Um, my branding team has me doing a lot more auditions. I'm doing a lot more red carpet events since we kind of chilled down on the film and we are, we are still filming, but at a very minimum. So the music is priority for me. And every time I'm dropping music, I have some type of product or brand that I'm endorsing. And yeah, television. We are small I think money. People need to get a chance to see who I am beneath all the makeup. You know what I'm saying? I'm really fun and free. You know, I can get ratchet and shit. You know, so yeah, I think I think that might be the next thing for me. Um, get more into the acting. Yeah. Cool. Gang, gang. Right. That was good. Aw, well, thank you for having me. Yeah. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, Dominate to You. Make sure you get um, Bitch Music, Vagina Power, Trap Bay on all streaming platforms. Shouts out to my branding agency, Eyelash Vision. Oh, don't forget to get the Diamond Donut and the 32 Flavor Diamond Donut at Sublime Donuts. It's open 24 hours, and we have two locations here in Atlanta. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.